No? Okay. Well, since I'm here, and potentially you're here too, I'm going to go ahead and start sorting my tackle bag. It absolutely got demolished this weekend while I was fishing. So I have, I have two bags now that I carry, well, that I have in the trunk of the car. Uh, one is my bass bag, and that keeps everything I have bass-related in it. And the other one is like my crappie slash cherry picks for the day. So for instance, I'll just show you. This is my quick carry, not my bass bag. Um, my bass bag's a Plano something or other, whatever was on sale at Gander whenever I wanted to go buy a bag. And then we have all of the plastics. Hey, if, if you're actually watching in that uh, in that comment section there, <clears throat> if you want to chime in and let me know how my audio is, that would be helpful. Uh, more plastics. More plastics which didn't get used this weekend because I was specifically targeting crappie and just about everything I use to target crappie is right here in these boxes with the exception of one or two things and I will show you what those are in just a second. I suppose I, uh, suppose I should have announced that I was going to go live, huh? Oopsies. I'll get the hang of this. Um, not much else to talk about. What is that? What is that? Do you see that? That purple light down there? Is that from? Oh, it's the glare off of my hooks. Neat. All right, that's everything in this bag. Hey, wait, is it? Yes. Yes, it is. All right, so, <clears throat> pardon me, have a drink of water. Ah, delightful. That autofocus is, stop it. How do I? Probably should have thought that through. Can't get to my mouse. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Headphone users rip. All righty. So in my bag on any given day, I will carry... Extra GoPro batteries. I have four. I keep one in the camera. Make sure they are all. <laughs> I need a better setup. Uh, I carry four. Uh, one in the camera to make sure they're all charged before I go out. Usually gives me about five hours ish of time. And if I'm fishing more than five hours on a day, that's a good, that's a good problem to have. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Where do I start? This is why we're doing this with me. I'm guessing I'm the only person watching right now, but that's okay. It's all good practice. You can see all my rods and reels behind us. Pardon the super professional backdrop. Um, this is my spare room slash junk room, if you will. We'll start with the bass box. 
there we go. This is an assortment of baits. It's such that I use if I'm bass fishing on the go. And that includes Senkos. Um, and we also keep in the outer pack a little Senko tool. It's a really nice little camera. I just ran to Walmart and got this. It was the best reviewed one. It's the Razor something, something, something. And <clears throat> some Ned Rigs. I don't ever... I've used a Ned Rig like twice, and I've caught a fish once on it. It's not that I don't think it's good. I just never think to pick it up, especially when you can throw a Senko. If you're going to finesse fish, maybe I'm wrong, but wouldn't you rather throw a Senko like 99% of the time? I guess. I don't know. So let's go through the uh, two different plastics here. We have the TRD Hog Z in black and blue. Black and blue is hands down my go-to color for most uh, most of the plastics I fish, probably. <coughs> <coughs> Don't vape, kids. Probably because the water I fish is usually murky. And if it's not, I will throw something like a Molten Craw, which is like a green pumpkin and orange mix. You can see the green pumpkin there on the back a little bit. And then we have our standards, our standard uh, Neds, black and blue Ned, as I said. The California Craw, which again is like a green pumpkin, red flake, uh, and a little bit of watermelon in there, I think. And that's, that's it. I have in my other bag, like, six more selections of uh, Ned Rigs. I keep telling myself I'm going to do like a Ned Rig video where I just go out and try to Pin them on Ned Rigs, but I feel like I kind of missed that window this year. Hey, look. My teeth look really good in this. <laughs> Been using white strips. And then for the uh, yeah, the Senkos, we got your green pumpkin, black flake. That's a standard. If you're throwing a Senko, you should be throwing uh, watermelon and green pumpkin. They're the standard, I think. Black and blue, which is my standard. A little blue flake and then this guy was doing work my watermelon and black and red flake I really enjoyed that let me get these put back in here real quick in a neat and orderly fashion there we go. they don't really want to fit in here very well but and then the mids there we go. Now, uh, a bait I threw a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot because I didn't do a lot of fishing for bass this weekend. But uh, cranks. And the... I'll just pull them all out. Put them apart. Matter of fact, I'll pull all this out so that you guys can see it. I've been alive for 10 minutes. See, this is... I've tried to make a couple of tackle videos. The problem is the one I recorded last, I covered all my stuff. It took me like an hour and 20 minutes to get through all of my gear. If you guys want to see a video where I cover all of my gear, I'd much rather do it live so we can talk about the baits interactively. But if that's something you want to see, let me know right, right, right there. And we'll get it done. So I threw two crankbaits this weekend. But I brought four, and we'll talk about the two I brought. Uh, matter of fact, it seems like we got the uh, Kraken Craw, no, Mini Banger, and Cash Craw, or whatever color that is. The op I have both colors. I have this Craw color, like this clear. Poke it, po poke it. There we go. This clear craw color here from the Boogan Squad. And then I have a little mini banger in this color here. I want uh, the opposite color of each in both sizes. But I threw this. Got one bite. Didn't connect. And I also threw the uh, Sexy Shad. 
can you yep you got it. sexy shad but i brought with me just in case this little like i don't know if i call this a shad or a bluegill or whatever but the uh, bait fish and some of the lakes i fish look very similar to this this is made by lunker hunt all of this is shallow diving because i fish from the bank and the deepest water i fish in six eight feet tops so i figure instead of bringing with me something that goes like you know six to eight feet and only being able to throw it in a couple of places, bring a, anywhere from zero to five foot divers and get in the middle of the water column most of the time. And half the time I'm be bumping off rocks, which are supposed to be crankbaits. Anyway, the fish I've actually caught, sorry, the bait I've caught the most fish on, um, <laughs> it's this little Ozark trail, like black and silver, uh, lipless crank shad. I've caught a decent bass too. Like nothing, you know, I caught lots of dinks, but I've caught like a two or three pounder on this thing. Four, three, four dollars at Walmart. And uh, definitely, definitely got my money's worth out of it. But that's all the cranks I keep in the box. If you, if you want, I'll show you uh, <clears throat> the rest of my cranks here in a little bit. But this weekend, that's what I brought with me. I was ready to throw them, but I... I <laughs> I threw my new Abu Garcia and Fate Black series like seven or eight times at each spot, and I made myself put it down because if I if I keep going, I won't stop bass fishing. So I uh, didn't do didn't do any bass fishing to speak of. Although I caught two or three bass and three or four crappie, so I guess I'm just destined to be a bass fisherman. Right here, we have brand I don't remember, uh, white and chartreuse um, quarter ounce finesse jig. I went quarter ounce because I'm fishing shallow water, and I figured I could try to throw it for crappie if I really, really wanted to. I've caught crappie off a jig before. It's not common. And I have this Guggen Squad. Um, this came in a mystery tackle box. I didn't buy this. Quarter ounce finesse, I think it's like, uh, chartreuse gill, sexy gill, something like that. I've caught plenty of fish on this. Uh, and then another quarter ounce, just little black and blue jig. Didn't throw any jigs this weekend. I always throw jigs. So this weekend I really got out of my comfort zone, stopped fishing for bass. And if I did fish for bass, I fished like a crankbait or a jerk bait or something, something I don't throw. Uh, next. <clears throat> If I had seen any school in bait fish, and I did, but by the time I did, I was too busy trying to catch crappie, I was going to throw this little mini uh, buzz bait. And the reason I decided I wanted to do that was because Tim Galati, um, he smashes smallmouth on mini buzz baits. And I would love to pick up a topwater mini buzz bait bass. That'd be pretty cool. Let's see. Next, we have... I threw this, not this one, but I, I threw it's in my other box. The eighth ounce. This is the half ounce inline spinner. And just whatever brand this is, rooster tail. Uh, just, just a staple. Like, you know, I guess this is considered more of a newbie bait, but it catches everything, including crappie. So I threw it a little bit, caught a bass on it, we win. And I threw this guy a couple of times because one of the lakes I fished at in this last video has holdover trout. The water near the dam actually stays cold enough year round that trout can hold over every year. And I've act the only two uh, trout I've ever caught were at this dam. So I brought that with me with a specific mindset of maybe hooking a trout and having something cool to show you guys. Would you just focus? Come on. You can do it. Now I'm fuzzy. Well, uh, other bass stuff I brought with me, and one of them is tied on right now, so I'll have to grab that. I'll show you guys here in just a second, or you guy. I think I'm the only person present here, because, I don't, well, it was zero at first, so I don't know. Maybe there is somebody watching me. If you're watching me and you're not talking in the comments, you're a weirdo. I like weirdos, so, so you're welcome here. Uh... Don't be too far away. Yes. Okay. This is the only uh, only bait casting combo I threw this weekend. 
I brought it with me. One of the reasons was because it's the newest, but also because it's super light. I have my Abu Garcia Revo S in a 6.6 six to 1 on a 13 Fishing Fate Black. Uh, mo- 7 foot 1, moderate. Hold on. 7 foot 1. Fast action, medium power rod. And this is like my crankbait rod. It's not really a crankbait rod, but it's the closest thing I got to a crankbait rod, so that's what I throw, and I don't throw enough crankbaits to justify going and buying an actual crankbait rod. And on it, the reason I grab this, we just go ahead and focus, is my silver and my chartreuse shad. I think, or no, green pumpkin shad. That's what this is called. A little uh, high-tech paddle tail swimmer on there. And I don't... I think I even got a bite on this this weekend. This is usually like a, it's a fish catcher for me, but I really like this setup. I'm going to go ahead and endorse. I'm not sponsored with my whole 74 subscribers, but uh, the 13 Fishing Black. It is if you go to Gander, it's a 79.99 rod. It's got a nice solid metal reel seat. The blank, you can feel it here and here. I like this 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 space right here. Nice little metal accent at the bottom. It just feels so tight. And the uh, hook keeper is down here. Now, this isn't a deal breaker for me. If I like the feel of a rod, I'll get one up here. But I'll never use it if it's up here. I'll always latch it onto the bottom of my reel right here. Uh, I have this in a medium heavy fast and a uh, medium fast. And I will definitely be ordering more variants of this rod for sure. I love it. Uh, So I went to show you that because that's one of the chatterbaits I use. Another jackhammer I own, uh, the Firecraw jackhammer. I use this uh, in rocky areas. Put a California craw, uh, beaver, or actually, yeah, beaver, sweet beaver. That's the only color I got, uh, or only California craw color bait I have. God, I can't talk. It's almost like it's midnight or something. And then. Those are the two jackhammers I carry with me. I try not to throw the jackhammers if I have like any other option. Because I lost one in my last weekend's video. I threw it, lost it, and that is the only time I've been super bummed out about losing a bait. Because I had only been throwing it for like 30 minutes. And boop, it was gone. <laughs> Good times. But then we have the whatever Shad Gill... The eight ninety nine jackhammer or chatterbait by Z-Man. I like this one because it's got the little weed guard. It's not a super stiff weed guard. Then we got that pedal tail on the back here too. So I would typically throw this before I throw the jackhammer. We have a four ninety nine standard uh, buzzbait by Z-Man and green pumpkin. And then we have the 899 Z-Man in black and blue. Very straightforward. Next, I brought two of every hook I have. Not every hook, but every standard hook I use. So if I was going to be thrown into some weeds, uh, just a wide gap, three-aught worm hook, throw a... Creature imitation on there and just weightless into a bit of weeds. I've done that before. And we have, I guess, about three of this. Because I knew I'd lose one if I started throwing it. This three aught heavy wire Gamagatsu extra wide gap hook. Then we got a four aught. I think this is Eagle Claw because so hard to find beats right now. And this is a much lighter wire than I'd rather use, but it was the only four rod I had on the shelf at the time. And then two little octopi hooks for my Senkos.
Now I have a little eighth ounce and a quarter ounce shaky head. Brought those with me just in case I wanted to throw a finesse worm. I didn't. I never. Once or twice I thrown a finesse worm. Wasn't. It was. Meh. I'm not a finesse fisherman. I really don't like to finesse fish. Which is why I kind of moved away from crappie. <laughs> but uh, that and I just got caught up in the whole bass thing. But. Uh, I brought them just in case. I brought two of each Ned hook I have. A little tenth ounce or sixteenth ounce. Uh, whatever head stand up boy. And then two mushroom head with the wheat guard. Be, be honest, I usually cut the wheat guard off. I don't like it. it makes the uh, TRD sit funny. And then for my Kytex and my Shad imitations, the bigger ones, I have these all 8 ounce weighted hooks here. And then for the little boys, I have these right here. I ended up not using those either, but that's okay. And that's... Uh, as far as the box is concerned, now I have some plastics I'll show you here in just a sec. But as far as that goes, I honestly, I think I'm just going to switch to this in general. Because while I was out there fishing, I was trying to think of, like, is there anything that I wanted today that I didn't have? Granted, it was just a quick trek back to the trunk, but no. No, this is pretty much the standard. I might have brought, if I was going bass fishing, I would have brought some of my six cents, three eighths ounce jigs, swim jigs. And throwing those around, but other than that, no, nah, I had everything I needed in this box. I guess I, I could have thrown in a white spinnerbait. I throw white spinnerbaits a lot. But yeah, that's this box. Um, that's about it. Set that down right there. There we go. Time is at 12.14. I got an hour or so. Now let's get to the crappie box, because that is the box. No, 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 wait. Oh, time out. I want to show you the bass stuff I bought. Or brought. Both. This isn't... No, eh, it's kind of bass. I bought... I have... Uh, this is in... I have this in... 4-inch and 3-inch, the Kitech Easy Shiner. I'm definitely going to restock on these. Uh, I hate how fragile they are. I love how many fish they catch, plain and simple. Could you, could you just not? Whatever. Uh, as you can see, I'm almost out. I have two left. I most commonly use these as trailers, but after the success I had with them this weekend, I think I'm going to start fishing these by themselves with the jig head. Seemed to work pretty good. And then I have the 3-inch. Uh, uh, Kitek, what is this? Uh, Swing Impact Fat by Kitek. Pro Blue Red Pearl. Wide Tail Strong Squid Scent. Ah, Squid Scent. That's what that is. Reading is fun. So yeah, that these two right here got the most action out of all the plastics this weekend. And stuff that didn't get any action. Uh, black and blue finesse worm. Didn't touch it. And then I have a variety of... Shad and fluke stuff. So I have two different zoom flukes. I have the... Whatever color this is white uh we'll just call it white and black it doesn't say on here See, this is just baby bass oh bait fish it's just bait fish i have the bait fish zoom uh fluke right here and then i have the baby bass fluke right here both four inches six inches i'm gonna get really good with these because they catch fish and i'm really weak with the fluke imitation but i also bought I have this Hot Snakes uh, Razor Shad and the Pearl Razor Shad by Z-Man. 
then reaction innovations i have i have another one of these but i didn't bring it it's just a pearl color right here another like baby bass they call it bad sexy okay didn't touch any of those this weekend not to say i don't like them but i was out crappie fishing i wasn't bass fishing as i've said for the 30th 40th time Oh, there it is. I didn't bring it. Sungill. Yep. And what do they call that? They call that the Little Dipper. The Sungill and Bad Sexy Little Dippers. Good baits. Now, for my creature baits. We have... By Strike King, Rage Tails, the Rage Bug in Green Pumpkin... And the Rage Bug in Watermelon Red Flake. I like these a lot. Uh, they're decent. They're not really the best value for money, as, as opposed to like a whole freaking bag of Reaction Innovations products. However, um, they do have a lot of action that I like. And I couldn't. My local uh, sporting goods store was out of Watermelon Red Flake, so apparently that's the color in my area. Could you just not with the autofocus? Thank you. Uh, and then I love the Sweet Beavers. I have Green Pumpkin, Hematoma, Blank Check, and Black and Red. But I brought with me just the Hematoma and uh, Black and Red. So I had Black and Red, Black and Blue, uh, Watermelon, and uh, Green Pumpkin. I need to stop shaking the table. Uh, creature base with me. I had all my colors covered. Just in case. And that that's that really is it. It's, like I said, I brought my Senko tool with me. That's it as far as the bass fishing stuff goes. Uh, you guys want to see some crappy stuff? Nobody? <laughs> no worries. How do I... I don't make it stop all the folks. Let's go. Let's Google that real quick. How to make YouTube and stop auto focus? Just stop. Well, I know that. She she told me to shut it off. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Help me out here. Anyway, I'm going to listen to that while I show you guys this. Okay. You're distracting and not helpful. Um, I bought a collection of Strike, Strike King uh, uh, Bitsy Minnows. Thank you. I got this little shad imitation. I got this little, like, I don't know if it's a shad or a gill or what, but different color imitation. And then I also bought a little fire tiger color. Yeah. And then I also, I've also already owned by Crappie King or, yeah, Crappie King or something like that. These little single treble itty bitty little swimmers. It's a little shag guy. And he's a bitty little fire tiger guy. I've caught fish off of these two before. But they don't they dive. They're hard, super hard to cast, and they dive all of like six inches. So um <laughs> stop with the autofocus. Uh my classic old Rapala. I caught my double catch on this in one of my videos. And then if I'd remembered I had this, I probably wouldn't have bought the Bitsy Minnow. 
But Lord, I don't know who made this. It's old. And uh, Fire Tundra. Uh, I've caught one fish off of this thing. I bought it because it looks super neat. But it's like a blade bait dilly boy right here. This little copper red and black blade bait. He's really neat. Oh no, I got him in a... Did I get him in an MTB? I don't know. I think I bought him. And then I got a variety of jig heads. Uh, my favorite jig heads are made by... I'll show you one of each. We've been live for 32 minutes with zero views. Talking to myself here. It's funny. I just, I just told my girlfriend. I was like, I don't, I don't talk to myself. Like we're having a conversation. I don't know how we got on the subject. Like talking to yourself in the mirror when you're by yourself or whatever. I don't typically do that. But here I am talking to me on the screen with nobody viewing. So I belong to a little auction group on Facebook. Um, and you can buy everything from hair jigs to jig heads, sometimes soft plastics if you make some soft plastics. And these right here, if you can see them, these are some custom painted. Now, these are old. Don't take the – and I tend to leave my plastics on them, which is bad for them. But these are custom painted by Mr. Donald David himself. And I ran out of silver because I use it the most, and I lost them all. But uh, we have black – with silver hook, black with red hook, chartreuse, and brown. And that those are my favorite to use. The problem is, is they're depending on what bait I'm throwing, whether it's a two inch or a three inch, they might be a little bit too long. So I went out and I bought myself some standard boys as well. And by standard boys, I mean your classic. Ah, I do not like this tackle box. At least not for this. Chartreuse, pink, black, and white with a little, like, I don't know what they call it, like Z hook or whatever. So it stays close to the bait. Standard, just terminal tackle, you know. And then we have a variety. And I do mean a variety. Come on. Oh well. Get hooked in my thingy. I want to super glue these in place so they don't come out. We have a little fire tiger in line spinner. A black. Ooh, he's already losing paint. Inline spinner, a white and silver inline spinner, another white and silver inline spinner. This one is three eighths, one eighth. This is one eighth, so they're both one eighth. Um, Panther Martin, and then another Panther Martin. Eee, little boy right here. As far as uh, terminal tackle and heart baits go, here, let me pull this off of here. That's that. I'll show you guys some plastics, of which there are a lot. I have a variety of Bobby Garlands here. I'm not going to pull them all out. I'll read you the colors here real quick, though. Patriot, which is, you know, I will pull them out. Patriot, which is like the silver and white clear with like a red and blue flake in it. Pretty sharp. Then we got Licorice, which is a chartreuse pearl. We have Cajun Cricket. Which I wanted to throw this weekend, but never got around to it. I feel like that'd do pretty good. Uh, electric chicken, which is a pink and chartreuse. A pearl white. A semen, I mean monkey milk. I mean, I, that is ex I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I would guess I'm a pervert, but that is exactly what I think of when I look at that. And then 
Uh, this is glow in the dark, but I didn't get it for glow in the dark. Just this chartreuse on chartreuse color right here. Got to turn two of these around. There we go. And then a mayfly color. Um, you know, I don't really actually use these Bobby Garlands very much. I've caught a couple of fish on them here and there, but for the most part, I don't I don't seem to have very much luck with the Bobby Garlands. Maybe I just fish them wrong. I guess they're more intended for like vertical jigging, and I hate vertical jigging. If I have to vertical jig to crappie fish, I'm not going to crappie fish. It's as simple as that. Kitech, right here. Oh, let me get that out of there. I need to come out of there. Do, 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 do. This boy right here caught me my only two fish at the spillway this weekend when I was really hoping I'd do better than I did. Ah, squiddy. It, it smells like fake crab. That's what it smells like to me, which I guess is a, a squid scent. I'm just going to go ahead and toss this because there's no way in, in God's green earth that that's ever going to work again. And here's the silver uh, Donald David J. But yeah, this three inch easy shiner. Did work. I got tons of bites at the Carbondale Reservoir. Just couldn't connect because I think they're just nipping the tail. And then I came to find out they're teeny bitty little fish. Another bait that is commonly used for crappie fishing that just doesn't seem to do me any good. Uh, beetle spins. But I keep them in there. Because I tell myself I'm going to get good with them. And I don't. Power base aside. I got these. They're kind of like Bobby Garland's. Uh, a chartreuse and white. This lemon meringue. And silver glitter, glitter pearl lamb. Uh, they're basically Bobby Garland's. And then my paddle tails. Uh, we got same colors. We got that green pumpkin black flake. We got that Watermelon Red Flake, Black, and White. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, and Chartreuse. You gotta have Chartreuse, man. You can't throw a paddle tail and not throw a Chartreuse. We live in a society. You know what? I should have had some music going. That probably would have been the sauce, is to play some music. But the problem is my speaker is right behind my microphone. So you guys would have heard this music and not me. Which probably would have turned out better anyway. Uh, yep. Black Pedal Tail. You guys just get to watch me. I, might, I think I'll leave this live um, for anybody who's interested in watching it. We'll see. Probably get like four views. And then we got these power baits. I gotta admit, I was really hoping to produce a fish on these. Uh, I don't get the sauce behind the whole like Berkeley power bait. I don't know if it's actually a thing, but this black and silver black shad, two point five cent or two inch five centimeter minnow, eighteen count, and then this power bait. Uh, Ripple Shad. Holographic Gold Black Shad. Man, this guy looks super enticing to me. But then again, I am not a fish. So what do I know? Again, Easy Shiner. Just gotta give him another mention, man. Just gotta. But that is not what caught me the most fish. And I will show you what caught me the most fish, you'll see it in the video when I finish editing it here in a day or so. Tip day or so. We know it's going to be a week. I'm, look, if you want to start uh, if you want to start making YouTube videos, get good at video editing um, or pay an editor, which if you're just starting out, probably can't do uh, because either you enjoy editing YouTube videos or you're not going to make it. Because I still don't enjoy it, really. I'm getting better at it, and I love learning new things. I always love learning new things. But uh, the video editing is by far the hardest part. I mean, I can go out and fish. Oh, hey, we actually... Two people. Oh, one people. They're gone. <laughs> Dang. Oh, well. 
I had a uh, I had somebody in here and I didn't even realize. Hi and bye. Um, as I was saying, the hardest part of video or making fishing videos is the editing. I don't mind going out and fishing and not catching anything all day, but other than that, now the bait that did the most work this weekend was I have one tied on. This little guy right here, this little tube jig, itty bitty boy on a 64th ounce jig head. Oop, and it's gone. <laughs> Dang it. Hold on. Your whole world's about to get unearthed. Ah, earthquake. Hey, boy, 64th ounce jig head. And then I'm not going to go through everything individually. This guy, I saw this, and I thought, yeah, this is going to do good. This little pearl suicide shed. Nah, well, I got a couple of bites, but nothing nothing great. And then here are the rest of this box right here. Just a bunch of tube jigs and a couple of little swim baits. That's it. We're almost done with that bag, guys, which means we're probably going to be wrapping up here shortly. Uh, I have my other bag with more baits in it, but essentially it's just more of what you've seen. Uh, some Guggen baits, uh, which I really don't use that much, and some more buzz baits, my spinner baits, and a, m more of my crank baits. But you saw the crank baits I like to use the most. This little box here is very simple. Bobber stops, bobbers, and weights. That's it. Uh, for because I knew I was gonna be crappie fishing. I didn't ever think I would use a ooh, headphones user. Headphone users, sorry. Um, never thought I'd be using bobbers again, but here we are, using bobbers. Um, or I'm sorry, floats. And then a collection of Donald David's hair jigs. Uh, this was accrued over several years. Donald David, if you somehow watch this, thank you, man. I take great care of these. I've gone, I've gone swimming to get these back, like into water that you ought not swim in, like the stuff I would not eat fish out of for sure, because these things are hard to come by. He only ties whenever the weather gets so bad he can't fish, and it's an auction style, and we just we all want them, so they can get expensive. Um, that is it for the bag I carried this weekend, guys. We're running out of cool stuff. I have my six-pound fluoro leader line that I used to tie all weekend. Got some bait hooks I never use. If a fish hacks up, no, I'm just no cutting line on the fly or um, getting a hook out of my finger, or whatever. It's good to just carry a pocket knife with you if you're going to be outdoors. You know, and then sinker tool. Oh, and you know those wire cutters. I know I could bring a multi tool. The fact is, I don't own one yet. But if I have a if I have a hook stuck in my finger, and I have to like feel myself trying to cut the come on, I have to feel myself trying to cut the blade off of uh, or the barb off a hook. I want to. I just want to cut it and be done with it. So I carry some wire cutters instead, plus they're, they're my grandpa's, so they have sentimental value too, which is why I'm extra careful not to lose them. But that's it. Uh, I'm going to call it here. I guess I'll leave this up for you guys to watch. Uh, give me, Go ahead and comment down below if this is something you'd like to see more of, if you'd like to see me schedule it. Maybe we can go over the rod and reel setups. So we can interact in the chat and talk about it. I can turn off this annoying autofocus i can get out all of my baits and let you guys see all the baits we can see what we have in common or what you think i should have or give you guys ideas for stuff you should fish i should i keep trying to tell myself look at the camera um but we're at 45 minutes and 46 46 minutes and we're going to call it here guys so remember stay safe stay happy stay healthy god bless you i'll see you in the next one if you didn't like this, go ahead and subscribe because there's a really good chance I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> I'm out.